plane. If I bring the eyes, here we go. So we have these eyes in here. If we try to work on the eyelid, you see you can, while, while you're trying to adjust the eyelid, you will adjust the eyes as well. So one good thing about Podbox is that you have the ability to pick the objects. You have it here in the object list. We, we, we have the layers, and this is the object list. You can also get it from here. Object list. If you want to keep your layers open and work with them at the same time. Pick both eyes, and I go to lock selected. Right. So now when I work on my eyelid, I'm not affecting the eye. That way, when I go to the higher level, I can still work with the, on the eyelid without touching the eyes, and I know the eyes are holding their place. So that's a very good feature here. Quick update on the model. All I've done so far was just adding with the regular brush to the topology or holding the control to contract and again shift to smooth. So pretty much these are the tools that I've used so far. I'm just gonna cut I'm gonna cut in here and I will come back when I have more update on the model. So I'll see you guys in a second. One other feature we have in Modbox is the ability uh, to move polys while you work and uh, that can be found in here. Again the same rules will apply using the B and the M button to choose the strength or the size of the brush. So I'm just gonna play a little bit with in here. I'm not really happy with that nose. But one thing you want to remember is once you change that you'll be changing the topology, the actual topology of the mesh. So we will need to export that low or the uh, lowest level back to Maya because the actual position of the CVs have changed. Also I want to point out the uh, here down at the bottom if you don't save you will get a reminder that uh, that you need to save otherwise you, <laughs> you might lose your progress. Uh, that can be uh, modified under the uh, window preference status line and this is the reminder. Alright, so it's done on every hour. One other brush that I find very useful is the pinch brush. And you can see actually once you do that, it's just pretty much tighten all these big gaps or the big grooves that you have or you might have and you want to have it a little bit tighter. So it's a it's a very handy brush to use. I'm gonna work now on the neck a little bit. very loosely here, I'm brushing around. I want to get that neck muscles. Uh, all I've done before is just uh, moving by this using the move brush. Just to get that skin fold. And I use the, uh, the pinch brush as well. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to drop the level to the first one. And I will add a new layer. If you go now up, 
you can start sculpting that new layer you'll see here for example and you can also th and that's a very powerful thing about uh, Mudbox you can reduce that effect on that specific layer Alright, so if it was too strong for example you can just lower it down you can totally hide it until you're ready to come back to it again I'm now just going to add the skin uh, or actually the skin folds here so I'm at the new layer that I just created and with the smooth brush, sorry with the uh, soft brush I'm just adding just definitions I will I will use also the uh, smooth brush afterwards and the pinch brush as well. Yeah, that's enough just to demonstrate what I was going to do. If you go down in the uh, levels, you see now the skin fold folder. Uh, sorry, layer has the number 4 on it because if I try to brush I'll get an error at the bottom here says, th saying this layer is currently locked at level 4 because we worked on it while at level 4 so y you need to make sure that you are at the proper level that you work with especially when you add layers one fast way of adding skin details is using the uh, stencil br uh, utilities. So the first thing I'll do, I'm just going to create a new layer. I'm just going to call it skin detail and just move it up. Go to my image browser and just navigate through your folders and found the images that you might want to use as a stencil. These are a bunch of images that I found on the web and I just manipulated them in Photoshop to increase the, the values between black and white. For example, I'm just going to use the skin and use this button here to set a stencil. Once you go to the 3D view, you'll see that image is waiting for you there. If you go to the advanced section of that uh, stencil properties, actually it can be also found in here. Stencil. You can dock it on the left if you want. And you can invert the values so you see what's happening. Also, if the stencil is too dark, you can reduce the visibility of it so you can see the objects underneath it. To now to manipulate the, the stencil, you press the S with left to rotate, middle to move, right to scale. So I'm just going to put it in the proper place, or actually the area that I want to work on. Just want a closer look in here. Right, I just want you to notice here the white area. Once I start brushing, you see that white area is getting affected by my brush, leaving the black. And this is the beauty of a stencil. You can use it really quickly to add some details to your mesh. So I, in this case, I want to invert the values because I want this is the one to be affected and just start brushing and you will see now I start adding some skin detail really really quickly once you're done you can move the stencil a little bit and you start brushing more You can also go back to invert the value and invert the function of the brush itself. So you can see I'm adding more definition to these pores. Once you're done, you can turn the stencil off and you start working again on your mesh.